Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day seven of the 44th Mill Valley Film Festival. We're so happy to have you here, live, in person, on the big screen. Of course, everybody knows we are not for profit and we cannot do this without the support of corporations and foundations and individuals. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank tonight's sponsor, Daniel and Michelle Kenyon. Uh, they've been extremely supportive of us for many years. Daniel is a member of our board of directors and uh, we thank them so much for their generous and gracious support. Uh, we are here for the Mill Valley Film Festival premiere of Dune, directed by Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> Literally one of the most highly anticipated films of the last at least two Century? years, maybe, maybe decades. Uh, so we ha are so excited to have Denny with us tonight and, um, and be able to present him with the Mill Valley Film Festival Award because as you know, this is a very special spotlight screening. And as you may also know, our spotlight programs were designed to look at a very particular moment in someone's career whether they're early career, middle career, late career, it's acknowledging a very special project uh, and a very special time. And uh, of course, with someone like Denis Villeneuve, it could have been for Arrival, which we had here at, um, for our opening night a few years ago. We did, with Amy Adams. Yeah. Um, and he's such a masterful filmmaker. Um, uh, so much to love, Sicario, Prisoners, uh, uh, Incendie. Um, and I was just talking uh, with Michelle, our sponsor for tonight, and she was saying, you know, I'm not really into uh, science fiction, but I love this director. And I think that that is the core of what we're really acknowledging tonight, is, you know, all these films that we know and love, and then you put together that with somebody that you know to be a masterful filmmaker. And you put that together with an iconic, mythic story. And it all adds up to a very special moment, not just for us here tonight, but a very special moment in cinema. So to receive the Mill Valley Film Festival Award tonight, I'd like to welcome to the stage Denis Villeneuve. Thank you. And Mark will present you with the award. Yes, I, I just wanted to add to a couple of things that uh, Zoe said. Um, we see filmmakers all the time who uh, work in the independent area, and maybe they'll stay in the independent area, like Jim Jarmusch, and others use it for a calling card. But what you rarely see is a filmmaker who retains the independent spirit and working on the scale that you do, which is a very, very large canvas. and to be able to take uh, a large film, um, an epic film, and make it personal, and deal with empathy, to deal with subject matter that you would typically see in a smaller film, and add to that uh, great, great um, subject matter that deals with the biggest problems of our time, and love, and uh, coming of age, literally all in one film, it is an amazing feat. You are uh, a magnificent filmmaker, you created a magnificent film, and we are so honored to present you with the Mill Valley Award. It's heavy. <laughs> Zoe and Mark, thank you so much for this beautiful invitation. By the way, I will tell you the truth. I thought it was my first time I, I, uh, as I was, uh, when Arrival came here in my defense, I was shooting Blade Runner. So that's <laughs> why, I, but I, 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 um, I will say that I'm, I'm deeply moved tonight uh, uh, to be with you all. First of all, uh, uh, I want to congratulate you. I mean, to um, put 
uh, on its feet a film festival during a pandemic, it's, it's heroic, okay? <laughs> so I, I, you have all my respect and admiration, and I thank you very much. I would, I, I would like to say thank you to everybody for being here tonight. Uh, my team and I designed this movie as a love letter for the big screen, and it meant the world to me that you are here in a theater to, to watch it. So I thank you very much for this. Thank you. Um, if, if, my, if my informations are right, uh, the, the Mill Valley Film Festival first edition was in 1978. Correct. Yeah, which is about the time where I discover what was the job of a director. So I will say that in some ways, I'm as old <laughs> <laughs> as a film festival. I, it, it's, uh, it's really moving for me to, to be here tonight. I thank you, it's a massive honor, and uh, I hope uh, you will uh, enjoy Dune that was made to be seen in theaters. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the director of Dune, Denis Villeneuve. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you're very generous, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like first to say uh, to everybody in this room, uh, again, thank you for having taken the time to watch the movie in a theater. That means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, it's just the beginning, right? Um, thank you for being here and bringing your exquisite film for us to see in the theater. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, where did this fall, this book, in terms of your life and importance, and when did you first interact with it? It's a book that I, I, um, I discovered by myself in a bookstore in a small town where uh, I was studying uh, at high school, so I was 13 or 14 years old, and uh, I was into sci-fi at the time. It's a long story. Let's say that was very bad hockey player, and and I, I um, which <laughs> is an understatement. And the the um, I was I was really in love with uh, science fiction at the time, and and um, I uh, discovered this book by myself, read it, and and was totally mesmerized. I read all the series, and then I became a Frank Herbert. I read all his novels. Uh, though th there are so many things that uh, deeply touched me when I read the book 40 years ago, and it's a book that stayed with me through the years. Uh, every time I, I uh, opened it, I, I read it a few times, and it's a kind of book that, um, according to where you are in life, you discover new things about it. And, and uh, so it's like uh, it, the love of the book kept was the flame was there, the desire was there, and uh, I remember seeing the David Lynch movie uh, made in the 80s. I was very excited to, to see it. And, 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 uh, but when I saw the movie, uh, which had very strong qualities, there's a lot of things that I loved about it, but things that I felt were, I, I connected less with it when it deviated from the book. And uh, David Lynch is a, a master, is one of my favorite filmmakers, but uh, I went out of the theater saying to myself, it's not what I had in mind, it's not, what the book was about, it was not, and I kept waiting, waiting, waiting for someone to do a new adaptation. I thought that it will come out one day. I, I was sure that at one point Ridley Scott would do it. I was sure that somebody will do it. I was, I was like, somebody will do it, you know? And I got tired. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, when did your love of film and your decision to become a filmmaker intersect with this particular love for this film, uh, for this book, Dune? Uh, in my, uh, quite young, uh, I, uh, I, um, I, at, uh, in the same years, I was like starting to be interested about what was happening behind the camera. I was like uh, raised in a small town and uh, at the, in that particular area, it was more uh, 
we were more it was more about american movies a lot of uh, and and uh, and the one of the director they, uh, that's where I, i discovered the notion of the director what does the director do what is what is the job of the director what is an author uh, and uh, what is a filmmaker and it came through steven spielberg because he was uh, he had made him, yeah please <laughs> I love Spielberg, and the the, the thing is is uh, he's he, um, he, he, you know it's very interesting when you're young and you, you there's there's something about the way some movies are different and why they are because there's a name attached to it and and then I discovered and f and and through Spielberg I discovered a new wave because I, I saw a Close Encounter of the Third Kind and there was this weird French scientist that was François Truffaut and then I, I oh he's a filmmaker too and then I discovered Godard and I discovered it was like uh, it was really my door and I was um, at the time uh, my best friend and I who was as good hockey player as I was, we, instead of uh, we, we were doing storyboards and writing screenplay. It was fantasy because of course it was out of reach for us, but still we were dreaming big at the time and uh, we, were, we, were, we, were, we dreamt at one point, what would a Dune movie look like? So it's, it's funny when you think about it, but at the time it was just like fantasy dream, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad, in a sense, that nobody else came along to make this after the other uh, mixed uh, receptions to the last films. But um, I guess you particularly directing this was not like a real kind of, I spent years trying to reach the, the owner of the rights. Uh, it happened in a very quick fashion, wasn't it? The thing is, uh, uh, when I... I, uh, I, I When I, I, I started to make uh, movies in uh, Los Angeles and uh, Hollywood, I, I, uh, people were asking, what would be your dream project? And I had the arrogance to always answer, Dune. I would love to it do It pays Dune. to be honest, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no, but I, I would love. And, and, and um, so at one point, uh, I remember um, at the time in the Blade Runner years, I was like, at the beginning, I was like trying to understand where were the rights. I heard that the rights were as soon to be available, and uh, I was trying to get them, which I didn't. And and uh, I learned that uh, someone that legendary, her name Mary Parent, a producer that is very, very respected and, and well-known, and uh, uh, will got, and I made publicly <laughs> a statement that it would be a dream of mine, and she called me because she was, she got the rights looking for a director. I was looking for the, the, a way to, and, and we, it was the fastest meeting, meeting in my life. Technically, I walk in the, her office, we look at each other, should we do this? Yes, shake hands, that was done. And, then, <laughs> and, and uh, the moment where people are asking me, were you afraid? I got afraid at one moment when I called Tanya, my partner and, and, and the wife and, and produce, she, she worked on the movie too, she's a producer on the movie. Uh, I remember getting out of Legendary and calling her from outside saying, I think I might, I will do Dune. And then I felt the weight on my shoulder. <laughs> when I, but, uh, It's a big commitment. Yeah. Um, but what's amazing about this film and, and, and many of your films, really all of them, but certainly on speaking of the larger films and the bigger canvas is, and I think something we can talk about intermittently through this conversation, is the, the personal element uh, that you bring to this, uh, that you're, you're, in, you're working on this huge scope and you're dealing with very big ideas, but yet the nuances of a smaller film, an independent film, are always present. And I, and I respect that so much, and it brings such life to this film when you're, you're looking at any of the characters, which we can talk about. But I, but I also want to talk a little bit about the screenplay. That must have been a re really hard decision to, uh, to decide, how, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to squeeze this all into one film? Or is it going to be a series? And, uh, and the related complications that may or may not come with that. Yeah, uh, your comment touched me. I thank you very much for, uh, about the, the what, you, I, I, what I understand is the intimate part of the movie, the, the, the intimacy of the movie. But the, I will say that the idea of uh, splitting it in two parts, I'm totally responsible. I'm the one who brought this idea. Why? Because I, I, right from the start when I revisited the book at the time, uh, uh, reading it, reading it, and, and starting to uh, think about how I will, I will crack it, uh, I said to... Uh, 
the studio that it will be not a good idea. Uh, it will be the best way to do it would be in two parts, and they sponta spontaneously agreed. It was not a discussion. It, it went. It was a, a very fast decision that the the uh, the thing is. I, my I first idea was to shoot both parts in the same time, so the audience will not have to wait years before. In between, I was saying we would shoot both parts. We shoot the first one, wait a year, a bit like the Lord of the Rings that did. You know, as I would, that was the. But the everybody thought it was too expensive, which I respected, and and uh, I kind of liked the idea that uh, I thought there was something very honest about uh, the idea of making a, the first part of a story and then see if it does interest people, if it create enough enthusiasm, and then you do the second part. I thought it, it's a it's a risky but honest, and, and I feel good about it. Yeah. I think we're all looking forward to like uh, three or four, three or four parts. What are you doing for the next 40 years? <laughs> um, casting uh, Timothy Chalamet, um, it seems, after I've seen the film, so perfect. I, I must admit when I was thinking a little different, well, yeah, he is young, but he's so skinny, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and he's a terrific terrific actor and been here before and we're, we're thrilled to have him but it, it, it right now in retrospect it just seems like just such a brilliant stroke of casting there is he was he always in your mind yeah he was like the only name on the page for paul um why because timothy first of all when you 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 know you're gonna put up on the shoulder of a young actor uh, uh, old movie uh, I, I needed some uh, timothy is a is a unique talent it's like a, one of the best actor in the past in the decade i mean of his age it's, it's a very um he's very mature uh, uh has a beautiful culture is brilliant very intelligent and at the same time, he looks so young on screen. Sometimes Greg Ferzer and I we were looking at the camera, he looks 13 years old sometimes. <laughs> and and, and uh, Paul at 3Ds is that. He's a, like a, a, an intellectual that has a strong abilities, physical abilities, but still someone that you will believe that will go from boyhood to manhood. You know, it's a, it's, it's the, that's the, the beginning of that journey. And, and, and um, uh, also, he yeah, is very charismatic. The camera loves him. I needed that charisma. Because what will happen next is uh, he, he, we will need to believe that he will fool uh, all planet and and they will lead them into war. And uh, we, I needed that kind of Timothy. Uh, yeah, he looks skinny because he's a giant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, seriously, it's very impressive how he transform himself. The first scene I've, I've done with him was one of the first scene was the gum jabbar, and I will remember all my life uh, uh, the camera being on him. And I ask him, to, it's in a way, it's like an inverted exorcist. You know, there's something awaken, uh, awakening and inside him. And he will, uh, this thing, that force will rise. And I saw it. I mean, seriously, we, I was shooting and I saw him being possessed by a, a force. I, I was, he is a very impressive actor. And we will, it's only the beginning. Honestly, it's like he is, yeah. <laughs> Well, the whole cast is e extraordinarily impressive. Uh, did you, did it really turn out to be like the ideal? Uh, I, I think I read with Timothy that there was no plan B. No, there was like the movie is scrapped if he's not doing it. But uh, uh, what about the rest of the cast? It's so brilliant. And uh, uh, Oscar Isaac, I mean, what a dad, you know. It, it's just the heart that he brings to that. I and think that obviously it's the script, it's everything about it. But. Uh, he, he really makes you understand, you know, what a decent person is and how much he cares for his, his child, not just a caricature. The, the, I would say that no matter what people think of the movie, I think that if you know the novel and you see the, 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 the actors and actresses, I think we, 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 I, we did a good job about that. I'm very proud of the casting of the movie because the, the description, when you read the book and you see them on screen, it's pretty close. And the, the list of the actors, the, when you look at the credits at the end, the, the names, it's pretty close to my, my ideal list. There was like, there's very few uh, people that uh, for sometimes a uh, schedule or, but uh, uh, I will say that it's a book that raised a lot of enthusiasm uh, amongst the, the acting community. So when I was uh, making a phone call, it was, I didn't have to convince people to get on board. They were all very excited. 
because they all loved the book. It was it was very nice experience to do the, the casting of this movie. And what an uh, ensemble of uh, award-winning actors, but that's also true for most everybody behind the scenes as, as well. You have uh, a tremendous team behind you in cinematography. Um, and could you talk a little bit about that part of your team? Yeah, the, the, the first person that got on board was Hans Zimmer, the composer. Why? Because at the time, yes, I, 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 um, I was uh, uh, finishing when I, I uh, decided to, to that Dune will be my next project. I was finishing the uh, music on Blade Runner, and I had to. Uh, uh, I had such a great experience with Hans, who is one of the. It was it's one of the most impressive artistic uh, experience that I had to do Blade Runner with him and Ben Walsh Fish, and I I, I was just like. Uh, I, I spontaneously, uh, uh, I, will, I knew I needed a composer for Dune, and I said to Anne, do you know Dune? And he said to me, do I know Dune? I mean, he said, it's like, it's, like, it's my favorite book, of, and, and I read it like decades ago, and you know what? I never saw any uh, incarnation, any, um, any movies, or I, because he wanted to stay a virgin. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want, he said, I would, I would kill to make a score for Dune, you know? So I, I knew I had a composer, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and, and uh, um, so I, I, uh, I hired Hans. Then I went for the production designer, I went to my old friend Patrice Vermette, mm. who uh, was not known for having that kind of experience. It was his first movie of, of that scale, mm -hmm. but I knew because I made, I, I worked with Patrice for years. I made uh, several movies with him uh, uh, that he, uh, he will have the culture and the sensibility to bring the images that I had in my youth. Patrice and I coming, having the same background, mm -hmm. and I knew, and he loved the book too, so I knew that we, we will be together able to dig in the past and bring back like archaeologists, the, the image that we had as kids when we read the book. I knew that it would be, uh, we, with Patrice and I, we have a very direct connection, you know, we, it's like, um, very direct, as I, I, I would not have him to adapt to myself, we, were, we, we think alike. So it's like, that was a done deal. And then for a cinematographer, I needed a cinematographer that will embrace nature, that will not fight against nature, that will not try to embellish nature, that will just try to embrace it and bring the power out of it. And Greg Fraser, for me, was the, my first choice. He, uh, I was really impressed by what he did on Mary Magdalena, on what he did on the Zero Dark Thirty. I remember the cinematography on Zero Dark Thirty is amazing. I mean, it's like, a, and, and um, the same, I, l I also, all these movies, I mean, I was a, so uh, I wanted some, someone of that had the flexibility, someone that would add a spontaneity with, with the camera work, and Greg went on board. So that those were my, uh, let's say, my first people that I approached and that they came on board with me. I, I believe I read that the uh, people behind the camera, uh, well, not just the camera, the whole uh, crew, many of them were so engaged in it, like Hans Zimmer went into the desert so he could immerse himself in the yeah, desert yeah. and dream about the desert and caress the de desert. I'm not quite sure, but uh, that's quite... Uh, uh, commitment from people who are they are so engaged in the in this particular it's project. a project that r raised uh, brought a l people it's it's really a, it's a project that that created a lot of passion into the artist who work and uh, because people love the book people understood the responsibility we had to honor Frank Herbert's uh, poetry uh, we uh, and everybody were very dedicated and and yeah it's really, it was really uh, moving for me to see the passion behind the camera. I think they loved the book and they loved your work too. So it's both of those things. They're not here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. I can say they love the book. <laughs> but talking about the desert and, and um, locations and special effects, you went out of your way uh, to use as much of that as you can. You, you filmed many different parts of the world and Jordan and... Um, uh, Hungary and uh, Abu Dhabi and, and other places as well. And whenever you didn't have to use special effects, I understand you didn't. Now I know maybe the sandworm. You know they they were I they think extinct well a couple well of hundred trained. years ago. 
But uh, uh, other than that, yeah. the, the, um, it's, it's, it's just I'm old fashioned. I come from the documentary and uh, I'm used, I was raised uh, uh, making cinema, putting the camera in relationship with reality and trying to find the best angle to find something poetic, something meaningful out of reality to create cinema this way. So when it comes to uh, fiction, in, even science fiction, I that's my the way I work. I mean, I need real environments. I, if uh, my life will be so much easy if I was able, I, I, I had, I, I was inspired by virtual environments. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, and I admire the directors that can do that. Me, I'm, I'm or I like old-fashioned way of doing things. I, I didn't invent nothing. Movies have been made this way since the beginning. I mean, it's just that. Um, technology allows us sometimes to create virtual environments, but I'm not inspired by that. I I, um, I love life, <laughs> and 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 life means like I love how we all were deeply inspired by Jordan and Abu Dhabi, bring the crew in the desert, the cinematographer, the actors, and myself, the way I directed them. It, it had an impact, uh, and on, on the and I will not never been able to do this movie in the back lot. You mm. know, it was like uh, uh, of course we shot. In, in Budapest, the, 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 we built as much sets as possible. Um, it has, it's, it's part of the process for me, and uh, I was grateful that uh, the studio, in fact, it was not a negotiation. I mean, I said to them, they didn't choose Jaws in a swimming pool. I, I, wa I want to go in the, I want to go in the, the movie's called Dune. I will not shoot that <laughs> on a back lot. I mean, I need the real thing. And, and, and honestly, uh, we had great fun. It just mean that, the, it, it, of course, it was difficult physically, but we had, it was so inspiring. And uh, I just surround myself with people that were dedicated and had fun playing in the, in the, this environment. It was super, it, I mean, uh, uh, the desert has an impact. That, that is the story of the movie. I mean, it's like a, you, you are following a boy that will have an a introspective journey that will make peace with a part of himself as he's discovering a, a landscape and a new culture and, and that land, the impact of the landscape on, the, on his psyche. And I wanted us to, be, to follow the same path. You know? and, and as, as Frank Herbert did, by the way, he was inspired by nature to write, write his novel. And uh, I wanted us to, do, to follow the same path. Yeah. Well, uh, just from the few interviews I saw some of your cast, they looked like they were really bonded and uh, and actually, you know, had a really great time. It, it, it's almost like there's two experiences for you and the actors, the making of it, and the actual film itself. Actually, when you put Oscar uh, Isaac and Josh Brolin and Timothy <laughs> together, it's like kindergarten. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it was I was more like a, yeah, it felt like a, a, a school teacher more than a director <laughs> sometimes trying to create. A <laughs> they they had a lot. Of, they they went along. Yeah, I think that when you know when you put people together and the conditions are a bit difficult and and then there's a good spirit, it's it's bond a big nice bonding. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many great performances and actors to talk about, but uh, just to go to more of the dark size, uh, Stellar Skarsgård, uh, uh, just as his character is, is so evil, just uh, it, it's a delight to watch. <laughs> yeah. Stellan was the first name that came to my mind when I talked about the Baron, because I didn't want the Baron to be a caricature, I didn't want him to, uh, to uh, be, uh, I wanted him to, to be a real being, frightening being, uh, uh, with a, a thoughtful uh, character that, uh, uh, and uh, I called Stellan and I, I explained to him what I, I wanted to do, and he had one question. He said, how do you want to do it? There was a silence and I stepped into the, I said into the truth, I said, I would love to use prosthetics, I would love to put you in a suit and to recreate for real the, the and he said, okay, I'm in. Because he didn't want me to, he, he said, uh, if you had said to me you wanted to do it CGI, I would I say, I'm mm. sorry, I'm, it's, I'm not your guy. But the fact that, uh, so the good news is that when he was waking up in the morning and doing eight hours of makeup, he didn't complain once <laughs> because it was part of the decision. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Um, I want to talk a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more serious stuff uh, because the film deals with so many important uh, issues, whether it's ecology, environment, uh, war, uh, man's inhumanity to man, and, and so many positive things too, obviously, the, 
but it's also an analogy uh, to what's going on now. Um, how much of that was, I, I know you owe, the book is the Bible, mm -hmm. but how much of that uh, between um, what's going on with authoritarianism around the world and the uh, wars and the pandemic, um, how much of that was a consideration for you? But the thing is that I would say that uh, it, it, it's the book, as you said, was the Bible. The book, for those who know the book, when it was written uh, at the beginning of the 60s, it was when he wrote, uh, Frank Herbert wrote it as, a, I think, it was as a kind of portrait of the 20th century. It, 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 it was just like it became, as time went by, sadly, more and more relevant. Mm. Uh, the book is more about today than it used to be. It's the uh, it's uh, it's sad because it's uh, it's quite tragic and and uh, dark book, but uh, it's a tragedy and and it's like um, um, so. I just stay close to the book. I mean, it, I felt that it was totally relevant for what is happening today about when the the danger of blending religion and politics together, the the the, the over exploitation of natural resources. Um, the impact on coloni colonialism, the alienation f coming from uh, colonialism, mm -hmm. all that, those th things that uh, the, um, were uh, embedded in, in the DNA of the book, so uh, I didn't invent nothing. It was there, frankly. Yeah. Um, I think people will be certainly talking about that. It, you can't get away from it, uh, those analogies. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen <laughs> in the next film. Uh, you introduced, uh, is it Chani as well? And uh, that love affair and uh, see what happens with Paul's growth. And, um, but I do want to thank you for retaining the humanity of the book and the humanity that you've done in all your other films, whether they were large or small. We had the pleasure of showing Arrival for opening night. You may clap. Um, the empathy that Oscar Isaac feels for his son and um, the, the need to really look at people as your friends and part of everything that uh, is important in life, whether they're your child or they live halfway across the world, um, is really important more now than ever. And I thank you for your brilliant work. You're very generous. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Sir, thank you. No, I, I mean it sincerely. It's, it's more important than ever. And it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful film. Um, I saw it for the second time this morning. I was doing the tech check. <laughs> and um, for a second, I had a, a chill. And I'm going, God, it must be cold in here. Let me put on my hoodie. It, was, it wasn't the cold. It was the film. It was just giving me chills. It was just so fantastic. So I really appreciate you coming here with this film and coming in person. And uh, I hope you will return many times. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a, to all, thank you for your generous generosity. It's an honor for me to be with. Uh, it's an honor for me to be with you. It's a privilege. Thank you for your generosity, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.